first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for uh, uh, coming here again tonight. Uh, uh, hopefully we're going to have a little bit of warm weather this week to kind of push these crops along. And it feels like today's uh, the beginning of that hot and sticky feeling, huh? So I'm going to make all you guys stare into the sun while I'm looking the other way. So, But uh, I'm Randy Wilkin. I'm the president of Pro Harvest Seeds. This is Ryan Bell. Ryan uh, uh, lives over at Covington, has a sales territory over uh, in, in Indiana. And we're going to kind of tag team and go through the soybeans here just a little bit. Um, and uh, when we get done, we're going to kind of go through the highlights of, of our Roundup 2 soybean varieties here. Uh, some of the new releases, some of the existing lines, we're going to touch on pretty much all of them briefly. And then when we get done, we'll kind of discuss some uh, uh, conventional options, uh, Liberty Link soybeans, some of those other things, and, and touch on some of those things. And, and Doug Goodman was with us this evening as well. Um, and Doug can uh, explain just a little bit about the new Roundup Ready Extend system that uh, uh, we hope to be looking at uh, for more weed control issues uh, in the next year or two. So, Ryan, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, I do want to make a disclaimer real fast. This plot was underwater about three different times throughout the year. Uh, so some of the, uh, the, the plants may be a little bit shorter or look a little different than what we would actually see, but it still gives you a very good idea of what you're going to see out here in the field. We're going to start off with the 2271s. This one may be a little bit early for a lot of people, but for a 2-2, this is an excellent benchmark hybrid. This thing is going to produce the yield for you. So if you're looking at something that you're wanting to do wheat with, you want to get some cover crops out here, this is a high or this is a variety that you would really want to consider uh, to put on a few acres. It is a medium on height and it's a medium bush bean as well. The next variety we'll talk about is 2484. Um, our numbering system, the first two digits are the maturity. So the 2271s are 2.2, 2484s are 2.4, so uh, we're gaining in maturity as we're moving through here. 2466 is a variety we've had in our lineup for uh, three or four years, done a very, very good job, really likes those high yield environments. Where we had some difficulties with it was it was a variety that didn't get a lot of height to it. This will bring more height uh, to the program than what the 2466 does. Uh, also brings a real good health package to it, um, all the way around just a real nice complete variety. Again, like Ryan was talking, great choice for uh, uh, something to get started with, uh, potentially do some cover crops, wheat, all those types of scenarios. We're going to talk about the 2684s next. 2684 is a new bean. It's going to be a limited release this year. Uh, this is getting more into your to where you guys are probably going to be starting wanting some of these beans. This is a very nice bean, very attractive soybean. Uh, it is a medium height, a medium bush bean. Um, this thing does jump out of the ground. Um, and it, it, like I said, it's very attractive and it's a defensive soybean. So it's going to, it's going to really defend against a lot of different things for you. But at the same time, it's still going to hold its yield. So next variety will be 2871. This was a new introduction that we had last year. Um, did a really super job. Uh, this is a great line and at 2.8 maturity it's really starting to get into the uh, heart of uh, what you guys are looking for maturity wise. We had this variety in the University of Illinois trials. It was in the top three in northern Illinois just about everywhere that we put it. It's a phenomenal line. This is a line that's also being used in, in some of the breeding of our, our future varieties that are coming along as well. Um, I really, uh, this is one of those lines I really uh, uh, struggle to find a fault with this line. So this is definitely one, if you're going to plant a late group two, this is one you got to have on your farm. 2971, uh, very similar to the 2871s. However, the 2971s is more of a bushy bean. So if you are in a wide road situation, you need a bushy soybean, this would be a soybean that would fit that profile where the 2871s you could take more to a, a narrow row situation. Um, this thing has some great late season intactness. It's going to be a nice looking plant for you. It's really going to hold its health and it's it's a very it, it, it's been overshadowed by some of the other beans that we've had in lineup but this is also a very great uh, very good choice for you in a, a, a late group two soybean situation. The variety that's really been the star of our program for the last two years is 3066. It's right in the dead center of our maturity. It's a maturity everyone likes and this is a variety that everyone likes. Uh, this thing uh, really exploded two years ago when it was introduced, um, outperforming everything that, uh, that anybody's been able to throw at it. This is definitely a, a benchmark, uh, definitely the, the key variety of our, of our Pro Harvest lineup. One of the things that you'll notice, there's a catch basin right in the middle of where we're standing right now. This is a low spot, so you can kind of see some of the, 
uh, progression of some of the plant height dwindling in this area. This plot was uh, planted on uh, Memorial Day. Um, we've had, I believe, actually we've had, uh, since this was planted, we've had three rainfall events in excess of two inches in less than an hour. So it's been underwater. Actually looks pretty doggone good considering how many times and how deep underwater it's been uh, a, a couple times. All of the seed that was in here was treated with Protect DI, so it did have a full uh, seed treatment on it, and I attribute that to uh, uh, some of our stand retention that we've been able to keep. We're just going to touch briefly on the 3135. For you that have planted this soybean, this has been a very solid soybean for us. It is uh, one that we do have some production of, but we're going to kind of move forward, and we're kind of going to move into this 3284, which Randy's going to talk a little bit more about. So 3284 is a uh, variety we're very excited about. It's a brand new release. It's in that 3-2 maturity. Um, we like where 3135 has been a good stable variety for us. It's been a little bit of a niche thing. Uh, there's some locales that's really, really got a sweet spot. This is going to spread it out just a little bit for us to kind of cover more of our marketing area. Um, also, one of the other things that we've had, one of the other issues is 3135s a lot of times can be 21, 2200 seeds per pound and there's some difficulties planting uh, with that variety and so forth. This is going to bring our seed size down to a little bit more manageable level, uh, so not quite so many pounds for you to, to handle um, and I don't think uh, we're going to give up at all. Uh, our yield data suggests that this is going to be a, a better line than the 3135s by one to two bushels. So I think this is going to be a win-win making this transition all the way around. Uh, we are probably getting into the later part of a lot of you guys, if you're up here north. Uh, for, your, for anybody that's further down south, down towards the Danville area, or over in Indiana like myself, uh, 3471 is a great soybean. It's a, it's a new bean. It's going to bring a big bushy plant type for you. It gets out of the ground pretty good. Uh, what's really nice is this bean will move anywhere. You can place this anywhere from your good soils to take it on the sand. So this is something that you, it's one of the must haves on your farms. Um, the other thing is this is a soybean that if you do any irrigation, you're not gonna get too, it's not gonna get too strung out on you. It's not gonna get all loppy and fall over. It's a very solid soybean. It has the great standability that comes with it. 3684s are a brand new line in that 3.6 maturity. As uh, our market area is kind of moving more into central Illinois, we're getting more demand for uh, these late group three products. We're really excited about uh, these three varieties. Uh, we really feel that uh, with 2871s, 3066s, and 3284s, there's a, a trio of lines in, in that maturity uh, that uh, we will run with anyone. Uh, I feel very comfortable I can sleep at night with that statement. With these three varieties that we have into the late group threes, we're going to be right there with anyone else. Uh, I would expect that we would excel in many, many situations. 3684 is going to be a really nice line for some of your better soils. Uh, it's going to pop out of the ground, do a real nice job. Again, we've got a good health package to it. It's a very attractive plant for us to look at all season long. And when we're combining it, we're going to be happy with the bushels that it's putting in the tank. We might be kind of moving out, but this is a really nice soybean. This thing is something that if you have a low, lower yielding environment, this is where this thing likes. This thing excels on your lower productive soils. This thing will jump out of the ground. It stands really good. It can move on any uh, row width that you are planting. So you can go from narrows to wide. And uh, this thing also has a great sandability later in the season. So that's something always of concern. If you're on lower productive soil, sandability, this bean will bring it. Then we'll finish up the last variety we're going to talk about tonight is 3971s. It's a late group three. It's pushing up close to a 4.0 maturity, so it is a full season line. This has probably got the highest yield potential of anything we have in the lineup. Um, I know a lot of you guys don't uh, uh, venture into that maturity. If you do, this is a, this is a definite must try. But those varieties kind of wrapped up and Ryan and I will be around to answer some questions here afterwards. Also going to kind of touch base on a little bit uh, some other products that are not out here. We do have some uh, conventional soybeans. We've got a relationship with Emerge uh, Seed Genetics that we've had for uh, three or four years. Um, they're one of the premier suppliers of non-GMO conventional soybeans out in the marketplace. We'll also be introducing, you'll see them in your seed guide, there's also uh, three pro-harvest non-GMO soybean varieties that we'll be bringing to the market as well to complement what they have. So we'll be bringing those uh, uh, to the marketplace as well. 
We also have some Liberty Link soybeans. There's a lot of talk about weed resistance, right? So we need to be rotating through our herbicides and so on and so forth. So we're bringing you all these different avenues to help uh, alleviate some of those things. That being said, you'll find uh, on that table, there's uh, these posters. They're really, really folded up well. We stumbled across these and it's a great listing of all the herbicides that are out there, all the tank mixes, the brand names, what the ingredients are, so you can be uh, assuring yourself and double checking that we're not using a lot of the same modes of action. I mean, that's, that's a buzzword we're gonna be hearing a lot more of is, is making sure that we're diversifying our mode of action and weed control. Um, so this is a great piece. Uh, we just found these about a week or so ago. There's plenty of them out there uh, for you guys to grab. They're a great reference. Um, it's a little bit of a challenge again, fold it back up to this size again, but uh, I did pull that off. So one of the other things that uh, where Pro Harvest is going to be separating from some others in the industry is uh, in the future, when you're starting to see some of these stacked soybean varieties from weed control, um, we're gonna be looking at multiple different products from multiple different suppliers. It's the diversity that we bring to, to our customers, to you guys. Um, so we would expect that uh, in the very near future, uh, hopefully a year from now we'll be talking about the uh, uh, Roundup Ready Extend soybeans from Monsanto, have the dicamba trade in them. Um, it's, it's, it's the hopes that uh, those will be uh, a year from now we'll be able to talk about planting those in 2016. A year after that, um, expectations are that we would be looking at Enlist soybeans from Dow, which those have the trait that they would be resistant to uh, uh, glyphosate, Liberty, and also 2,4-D. In the future, there are several other technology companies that are working on things. Dow is working on uh, products resistant to balance, um, Callisto, a uh, whole myriad of products. So as we move down in the future, um, you'll see more and more of those stackings and giving us some other uh, alternatives, some other options for some of the weed control. Doug, you want to touch on uh, Extend? I've been working uh, with uh, essentially Monsanto corn states. Uh, well, since about 1996, so representing Roundup, Roundup Ready to Yield. We actually, uh, the organization I work for, we have three different breeding programs. And so um, what I'm here to do, though, is not really to tout my beans necessarily. I will tell you this, Extend Soybeans uh, are phenomenal. Um, whether you need the additional trade or not, the yield potential on them right now is blowing away Roundup 2s. So typically in our elite yield trials, we'll see eight Roundup 2 checks in a test of 50 varieties, and we'll have three to seven extend lines out yielding the highest yielding Roundup 2 variety. So I'm extremely excited about them. And before I get you too excited, problem is we're only going to have probably 2% of the United States acres in Extend in 2016. So you might say we got the, the cart ahead of the horse today. So since I, that's what I've got to say about Extend, it's phenomenal technology, clean fields, the volatility in my opinion is handled and if you follow label directions with the right strip spare tips and so forth, I haven't seen it drift more than 10 rows maximum. So what I'm gonna do now though, is shift gears and talk to you about soybeans. And I'm, I'm talking conventional beans, Liberty beans, Roundup beans, Roundup 2, Extend, Enlist, whatever. Uh, Monsanto currently has, for their Roundup program, um, they call it Roundup Rewards, I believe, or Roundup Ready Plus. Really, they're encouraging you to use pre uh, uh, or residual type products, and they will reimburse you for using them. So in other words, if we can kill mare's tail in the fall, we don't have to worry about it in the spring. If we can put things down in the fall and or spring, all of a sudden, Palmer Amaranth becomes less and less of an issue. So particularly on your Roundup 2s from Monsanto, uh, if you can use these different uh, residuals in combination with Roundup over the top, you can pretty much eliminate a lot of your 
uh, weed issues and you get reimbursed to do it. Now, um, beyond that, Randy, while you were away, I snuck into your plot. And so I always carry a, a spade and I always carry a soil probe. And I'm gonna compliment you because I was able to push it down pretty easily to a foot. So what that means to me is since I have no compaction to be concerned about, I've probably eliminated 90% of the chance for Phytophthora, Pythium, Rhizoctonia, Sudden Death Syndrome, and Brown Stem Rot. Most people don't think about it, but all of those fungal diseases start at germination through about V3 or V5 very, very early in the plant's life. So as I was driving in uh, from Kentland, Indiana today, I saw several fields. I stopped, it was brown stem rot. Compacted areas, I got this out, wet holes. Uh, I've seen in southeastern Indiana, I've seen a lot of SDS. They love to run their turbo till kind of equipment great for mulching up stocks. If you run it in wet ground, it's also great in you know, causing compaction. So a lot of times we spend a lot of money for equipment that in turn causes an issue. So this is fantastic. But what I'm really getting at is if you can eliminate compaction in your soybeans, you got some really good things going. We've known for years you know, like if you got compacted ground and you got corn, it'll pancake the roots on corn plants. And you get a saturating rain, winds, and all of a sudden the roots tip out of the ground. Well, soybeans don't tip out. But soybeans, if I dig them up, and I've got pictures right now, where the soybean roots are going flat across the ground. You know, you got a compacted layer down there, three or six inches. Your roots can't go down, so they go out. So it's, it's devastating for corn. I think compaction is 10 times worse for soybeans. And the reason being, it creates a moisture barrier in the spring. So you got the top of the soil and then you got this compaction zone. You get rain and it, it's just like a, a, a dish pan. All the water stays in that compacted area. So each soybean seed, in my mind, is a baby soybean plant. I stole that from Frank Thorpe years ago. He was talking about corn. But it's a baby soybean plant. Think about your human babies. You put them to bed, what do you do? You wrap them in a blanket, tuck them in a nice warm spot. Well, if you've got a compaction zone, you've got, in the spring, you can have cold, wet soil and quite frankly, it's teeming with fungus. So if you put your soybean seed or your baby soybean plant in a wet, cold, fungus infected situation, you're not gonna have the best result. You can get SDS, Fusarium, which causes it later in the season. You can get brown stem rot, Pythium, Rhizoctonia, and Phytophthora. If you break the, the profile up like Randy did in this plot, I don't expect to see those diseases here because the water will go down through the profile of the soil and it won't be cold and wet. All of these diseases are fun, fungi. They're basically mushroom type diseases. And what you really want to do is eliminate that from the root system. Um, the other side of the coin is it also limits the access to moisture below that zone in a dry year. So if you're in northwestern Iowa right now, it was wet this spring. They didn't plant till late. They planted too early. They compacted the soil and now it's a drought. So instead of them having pockets of brown stem rot and SDS, what they've got is pockets where they ran out of the moisture in the top six inches of the ground. So first step to high yielding beans, eliminate compaction, get rid of the fungi, which can really rob you of the top 25% of your yield potential. 
Second thing I'm going to hit on real quick, I got five steps to high yield, higher yielding soybeans. pH. A lot of people rent ground. They'll say, well, I'd rather put on P and K than spend money on limestone. Huh-uh. Soybeans highest yield will come between 6.0 and 7.0. Ideally between 6.3 and 6.5. That's the sweet spot. What's interesting is at high pHs, the, the alkaline texture of the soil ties up the nutrients. So the building blocks to form the pod and the seed are not available. So high pH, you limit phosphorus, boron, iron, manganese, and zinc. The higher the pH, the less available those nutrients are. Conversely, low pH, and where I grew up in Illinois, we were more, more likely, I was near Greenfield, Illinois, we were much more likely to see a 5-4 than we were a 6-8. But low pH, actually phosphorus is wild in that it's a double-edged sword. Either way, calcium, magnesium, and molybdenum are all affected by low pH. So for me, eliminate pH. Healthy roots are happy roots and have the potential to be very high yielding soybeans. And if you got a sweet spot in the pH balance, it's even better. Randy, thanks for allowing me to come today. I'm gonna to be here for quite a while. If you got any questions, be sure to catch up with me. Thank you. Mm -hmm.